This is amazing. Now we have open interpreter, same as code interpreter in ChatGPT. You can ask it to change any settings in your computer, like changing your dock mode. You can run code in your computer, like creating an app like this, and it will end up being an app like this. It will help us to summarize documents by providing the PDF, and then it gives us the information. It helps us to create apps, access calendars, and find the latest events, and also send email with those information. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about Open Interpreter, which can modify, change things in your computer and generate code locally on your computer. This is amazing, where you can integrate your local large language model and perform tasks. I'm going to take you through step by step on how to do this. But before that, I create videos in regards to artificial intelligence on my YouTube channel. So do subscribe and click the bell icon to stay tuned. Make sure you click the like button so that this video can be helpful for many others like you. In this, we are going to see how to analyze server logs, how to modify images such as changing it to grayscale, convert images from PNG to JPEG, create a snake game using Python, trimming your video and grayscaling it, creating music like this, summarize the PDF document, analyze data from a CSV file and creating charts like this. Let's get started. First, create your virtual environment using conda create hyphen and open interpreter Python equals 3.11 and then click enter. Once that is done, conda activate open interpreter to activate the virtual environment. Next, pip install open interpreter in your terminal. This will install the main open interpreter package. Once after that is done, pip install fast API and UV con. This is for creating a fast API application using open interpreter. Once after you do that, export your open AI API key like this and then click enter. Now you can just type interpreter in your terminal and this will automatically start the interpreter. Now you are able to ask any questions such as listing all the files in my desktop. Would you like to run this code? And I'm going to click S and then enter. And then it listed all the files in my desktop. Now there's the images folder. I'm going to ask total number of images in the images folder in desktop. And it responded saying totally 47 images. I can see the images format is PNG. So I'm going to convert that PNG images to JPEG. So I'm going to ask change the images format from PNG to JPEG. It is listing the steps it's going to take and then perform the request. I can see the conversion is completed. When I check the folder, I can see the JPEG files listed there. The conversion is quick and simple. Next, we are going to monitor our computer, spec usage and all details. Find my space usage, CPU usage and process monitor. Click enter. I can see that it got the information from various commands and it's giving me the final output. The system currently uses 676 processes, average load, CPU usage, and the disk utilization. Next, I have a world population data set. So I'm going to ask it to, to do exploratory data analysis and plot charts. Now this is going to do EDA. I can see it's writing the code to analyze the data. Total entries 234, total columns 17, and columns include these ones. I can see it opened a file in the browser which contains the column name, the count, mean, standard deviation, minimum, and other information. Now it's trying to plot the chart, and here is the chart of the population growth rate for the top 10 most populous countries in 2023. This is exciting. And here it says, if you would like to see more visualization, I can assist you with that. So you are able to create any visualization based on a simple request running in your terminal. Now I have a server log in this location, I'm going to ask it to analyze, analyze this log file. One more diagram which was created previously, which I forgot to show you, which is a histogram of world population density. And here are the information. Here's the server log file which we are analyzing and it analyzed totally 1 million log entries, total number of HTTP requests, total number of bad gateway, not notified, forbidden, and the list of URLs used. This is very in-depth. You can even query more asking any suspicious behavior from your log file. Next, I have a cake image. I'm going to change the color of this image to grayscale. I've added the path to the image, change it to grayscale and save it. Image converted to grayscale and it is in this location. I'm going to open this and here it is, the output. So now you can modify any images 
the colors, the tint, the saturation with just one prompt. This is exciting. Next, I have a video like this. I'm going to convert this to grayscale and also going to crop the video for only five seconds. I've added the path to the video file, convert it to grayscale and cut the first five seconds of the video, then save it. Click enter. I can see the video got trimmed and converted to grayscale. Let's look into that. And here is the output. I can see still it's nine seconds. I'm going to try that again. Trim the video to five seconds. Now it's going to trim the video.mp4 to five seconds. That is the original video. The trimmed video should be in this folder. And here is the trimmed video, which is for five seconds, which I can see here. Next, I'm going to ask it to summarize this PDF document. Summarize this document and click enter. And now it's generating the summary of the document. Quick and easy. Next, I'm asking it to generate a music in C major scale melody for one minute and save it in a file. I can see the beats per minute, beats per measure for one minute. That is 60 seconds I can see there. I've opened that file. It's just a constant note. I'm going to ask you generate the melody and then ask you to write it in a MIDI file. It's asking for more clarification. I'm going to tell use ABC notation and then compose. I can see it's writing in ABC notation format, but for a short amount of time, but that's fine. Execute above code. This is giving me a starting point, but I'm going to insist you compose the melody using ABC notation and save it in MIDI file. And here are the notes which I can see is randomly generated. So I don't think it will sound good, but still let's listen to it. That is okay, but this can be much improved by giving the right prompt. Next going to ask, Find the events in my calendar for today using iCalbuddy and then click enter. I will now execute, proceed. And now I got the response here, the one event today in my calendar, which you can see here. I'm going to ask, add an AI consulting event from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. to my calendar and then click enter. Now I can see it got added to my calendar, which you can see here. Slight time difference, maybe because it didn't identify the location where I'm located. Next, send an email to email address about today's AA consulting meetings. The mail has been sent, which I can see here. Now let's ask, create a snake game in Python and then click enter. And here is the game. It is running across the screen. You lost. I'm gonna try that again by clicking the C and I can see the snake getting bigger and it's going fast. It's going across the screen and I'm out again. Next, I'm going to ask, create a snake game using HTML and JavaScript and save it in a file. And here is another snake game using HTML and JavaScript. I'm gonna click the start button. I can see the snake is running, but I don't see any fruit to eat, but that is fine. So now I hit the wall and I get the error saying, game over, your score is zero. You should be able to fine tune or send more prompts to fix this issue. We got the snake game.py file stored here. We can even refactor the code or find any issues in the code. So I've given the path for the file. I'm gonna ask, refactor the code. Now I can see the code got refactored. I'm really excited about this. You can see the potential behind this. I've already covered the basics in regards to different use cases, and you can extend this from here. One final thing I wanna show you, you can create a fast API and integrate your interpreter or chat and get the response from here. In this way, you are able to integrate this interpreter in any of your Python application. So now I'm gonna run this code, UVCon server app reload. Once after you've done that, I'm going to open another terminal. I'm going to query the same application, list files in the desktop folder. And in the left-hand side, I can see it's running, it's processing the request, and finally we got the response on the right-hand side. A simple fast API integration with Open Interpreter. You can integrate this with LM Studio. Just choose the model and then click Start Server. Now Interpreter and then type local. Now this is running LM Studio. To integrate Olama, run Olama, run Mistral, and click enter to download the Mistral model. Then type Olama-model, Olama slash Mistral. This will automatically use the 
Mistral model through Olama. You can use Jan AI in your open interpreter by just having the API base with this URL and the model name, which you can get it from this model ID and your Jan AI is ready. Similarly, you can integrate text generation web UI, just replace this URL with the text generation web UI URL, like changing the URL to port number 5000. And similarly, any open source large language model can be integrated with open interpreter, as simple as that. I'm going to create more videos similar to this, so stay tuned. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.